Retirement tours are always reserved for the most legendary players. The most recent example of this was Kobe Bryant's final season. Once it was official that he was going to call it quits, he went stadium to stadium, received standing ovations and an assortment of gifts from the opposing teams. It's our way of saying thanks to a truly special player. But there was one player where the league and the fans made it abundantly clear how they felt about him, and it wasn't pretty at all. That player was Elvin Hayes. Let's go back to the 1983-84 season. He made it known to the NBA world that he was going to play his final season, according to the New York Times. At that point, he was one of the most accomplished players in NBA history. Consider some of his notable achievements. By the time he played his final game, he was an all-time leader in games played, minutes, and field goal attempts. He was also third all-time in points and rebounds. On top of all of that, he was a champion. I understand that winning only one title doesn't seem like a big deal now, but during that time, he had the same number of titles as Jerry West, Oscar Robertson, Bob Pettit, Rick Barry, and Dr. J. I can assure you they weren't counting rings as much as we do now. He was, and still lives, one of the most legendary players. So as he went to stadium to stadium for the final time, you would think that the opposing teams and fans would pay the proper respect to this all-time great. That is where you are wrong. For example, here's what the Washington Post reported before his final game about the type of reception he was receiving. Quote, He got a plaque in Philadelphia, a clock in Seattle, a proclamation in Houston, and polite applause elsewhere. No cars, no boats, no television sets, and no tears. Just goodbye. In San Antonio last week, Hayes didn't even leave the bench when he was introduced there for the last time. He gritted his teeth, nodded, and flicked his hand in a weak salute. So much for the farewell tour of Elvin Hayes. End of quote. No cars, no boats. Did he really think that teams would show him that kind of love? The writer was likely thinking of the retirement tour that John Havlicek had in 1978. According to Sports Illustrated, the teams of the league were essentially kissing the feet of this highly respected legend. The reasons for that weren't just for his extensive resume, it was also his reputation. You couldn't find a single opposing player or fan saying anything negative about him. Even Jerry West, the player who lost so many times to him in the finals, went as far as to say that he was the ambassador of our sport. It's no wonder that he was showered with gifts and love in every stadium he went to. But Elvin Hayes was a different story. Why wasn't he getting that same kind of love? I believe Ray Patterson, the president and general manager of the Rockets, said it best when describing the reason behind the dull reaction he was getting. He said, Elvin has to realize that he's reaching the stage of his career where a lot of subterranean feelings towards him are gonna come to the surface. What kind of feeling was he referring to? Well, he started by saying this. I think if you took a poll of coaches and players about Elvin, they say he's the toughest guy in the world to deal with. Okay, a superstar player being hard to deal with is nothing new in this NBA world. But I'm telling you, Elvin Hayes wasn't just controversial or polarizing. He was hated by virtually everyone. That includes his teammates and especially his coaches. The following quotes that I'll be referencing are all from the Washington Post. Since the writers from this newspaper saw him play more than anyone else, it was only right to go to them. To start, here's what they wrote in 1983. Few athletes in any sport elicit such emotional reaction from current and former teammates as Hayes. If you want proof, let's go through all the testimonies that they received throughout the years. Alex Hanno. His coach while he was playing with the San Diego Rockets described him as the most despicable person I've ever met in sports. His coach while playing with the Houston Rockets, Dale Harris, remembers having screaming matches and being called out publicly for removing him from the starting lineup. His running mate, Wes Unseld, who never badmouthed anyone, let alone a teammate, said this about Elvin. There were times where I wanted to strangle Elvin or break his back. Those thoughts definitely crossed my mind. 
Even the trainer of the bullets told the Washington Post that being around him was like Chinese water torture. This was the reputation that he had around the league. As bad as all of this sounds, this doesn't mean that he was a bad person. It's quite the opposite. He also had the reputation of being an extremely charitable person and affectionate with children. He lived a clean life outside of basketball. It makes so much sense that the Big E was referred to as the Big Enigma. He was basically two different people, as Dale Harris described him. There was the man outside the locker room and the man inside the locker room. Within those walls, he was harsh with everyone, including himself. In his final season, he admitted that he didn't always conduct himself the right way. He told the Washington Post, I've done some things I wish I hadn't. And I guess I can see why some people would say I was hard to get along with. It's just I expected so much from myself that I expected the same out of my teammates. His self-reflection was commendable, but it was too little, too late. In this industry, it's all about how you're viewed by your peers. If you don't have their respect, the rest will follow suit. As David Rebnick wrote during his retirement tour, quote, Coaches, players, and reporters alike were frustrated by his antics and statements. Many could not stand him. Many still can't. End of quote. In his final season, it was clear that the fans could be added to that list, except the fans in Washington. He is adored in that city, and rightfully so. In his final game there, he received a standing ovation when he was introduced as a starter. Unfortunately, that was the only storybook ending that he got. What about you all? How do you remember Elvin Hayes' retirement tour? Do you think he was misunderstood or was all the hate warranted? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.